Welcome to the flip side and welcome to another arc tutorial where I am going to show you guys today how I take all of my screenshots in arc because I didn't have a let's play for today. So we are going to do a tutorial instead because this is something that I've wanted to share with you guys for a little while. So the most important thing and the only way that you're going to be able to get the screenshots that I get is uh, you've got a couple things that you've got to do before you even start the game. So what you have to do first and foremost, and this, as far as I know, only works on Steam. I don't believe there's any way on Xbox or PlayStation to do this. Perhaps you can find a way, but this uses your NVIDIA graphics card on your computer in order to actually take awesome screenshots. So what you're going to do is you're going to come into Steam and you're going to go to play, and then it's going to give you an option here. So if you go ahead and you... Uh, just click the the desktop shortcut you're gonna circumvent this whole process and because you don't have to select which version of the game you want to open if you just click the desktop shortcut so you have to open it through the steam library here and then you're gonna go to play and you're going to click launch arc with nvidia ansel and so once you launch it with that that is going to um, do a couple things. First and foremost, it's going to allow you to actually take your screenshots, but secondly, it's going to make the game extremely buggy. I don't know if it's buggy for anybody else if they, if and when they use this NVIDIA Ansel mode, but for me, it really messes with my game. Um, after I go into the Ansel mode, um, certain buttons stop working once you go out of it. So, that may not make sense here, but I'm going to explain as we go. So, uh, that's the first step you have to do is launch through through Steam and use the NVIDIA Ansel launch sequence. But the second thing you have to do is you have to play in single player. You can't actually use this mode on your servers, which is kind of a bummer. But it does make sense because when you go into this mode it actually pauses the entire game world and you can fly around the entire world with everything frozen in place. So obviously that's not gonna work on a server, but you could always, if you're doing a let's play or something, I'm assuming you may be wanting to take screenshots or uh, make thumbnails or something along those lines. And so what I do for my screenshots is sometimes I will import my dinosaurs using the obelisks from my server into a single player map so that I can get the photos I want or I'll just find a dino in single player that um, that I can then change the colors to match the dinosaurs that I have on my server so that way there's consistency between my thumbnails and the actual videos themselves um, and sometimes I, I don't need to do that at all but anyway once we get into this game, I will show you exactly how to take the screenshots and you're going to have a whole range of tools at your disposal, uh, including depth of field, you can use a green screen, you can adjust the colors, the brightness, the contrast, you can add some special effects on the pictures if you want to by adding you know, certain filters like an oil painting or, or something along those lines. Um, and so here we are. So the first thing I like to do is obviously go into creative mode because I don't want to die. Um, and then you can go ahead and spawn in whatever you need if you're looking for a specific creature. Say, I believe there's a tech raptor right over here. There sure is. So all you do now is press alt and let's, let's do this. I'm gonna run and you press alt and F2. By pressing alt and F2, oh wow, that, that really, did not really go the way I was planning on. Let's try this one more time. Alt and F2. There we go, that, that's a better photo opportunity there. Except see, I'm running towards, away from the sun right now. So you gotta, you still gotta work on your composition a little bit when you're trying to take these pictures. But here we are. So everything's blurry right now because I have a depth of field filter on, but I can go ahead and I can turn that off and everything is now in focus and the game world is frozen and again to do that i just held down alt and f2 at the same time and that brought me into this mode and as you can see i can fly around and check out what's going on this rg has no eyes maybe one of the most horrifying things i've actually seen in arc <laughs> but as you're going around you can hold down shift to move a little bit quicker and then but we are going to actually come on back to where we were with the raptor, which was 
Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Did I lose myself? <laughs> here we are. All right, so we're here. So there's a couple different modes. I'm not gonna go through every little detail here. You guys can play with this as you will. I just kind of wanted to show you the basics. But up here, the way I do it is I usually come up to s capture and I will take a super resolution photo. Now you can do 360 degree photos, which is cool for like VR stuff. Um, not sure really what this is. But I just do the super resolution photo, and then you can take pictures up to 33 times the resolution you're playing in, which is nuts. I usually just do three times because it keeps a really nice quality when you're using it for thumbnails. But quite frankly, two times is probably plenty. But I do it at three. And then for method, I would not change any of this. If you do enhance, it actually renders out as a separate, as a, um, a file that you have to open in a very specific program. Um, so it's just, it's not very user friendly. Uh, so I would just stick with standard. And then you can save it as an HDR, and you can show a grid if you want to try to go by rule of thirds. If you want to hide the side panel, you just press insert, and then that makes that go away. And then you can bring it back by pressing insert again. Then you've got this option here for your camera where you can adjust your roll if you want to go left or right. Um, but what I like to use a lot because I really enjoy the telephoto look you get um, when you decrease your field of view. So instead of just getting closer to my subject like this, I actually like to get further away and decrease my field of view because that just compresses everything together and you can get some pretty cool shots like this. So. You can also obviously go wider. If you want to get like a, a super wide shot, you can do that as well. You can get some some cool uh, cool shots of some of the bigger dinosaurs like this if you really like. Obviously, it does distort, but you guys can play with that as as you will. So that is the, the basic features here. And then you can go into filters and you can add all these different filters, which is pretty cool. Brightness and contrast, black and white. You can adjust the colors. Oh, oh, I did not mean to click that. But hey, here we go. You can here we go. The the tint, color, intensity, the temperature. Make it warmer, colder. Adjust your vibrancy. You can make those colors pop a little bit more. I personally like to do all of this in um, post. So I'll usually take the photo into Photoshop and then do all of my coloring and brightness and contrast. So really, the only thing that I use is occasionally I'll use the green screen filter which is really handy so what it essentially does it just throws a, a flat green screen in your world and you can just decide at what distance you want that green screen to sit at so if I don't want that rock in the background I can just bring this up and just as soon as the raptor is totally revealed right there I can take my screenshot by just clicking snap and now I've got this raptor on a green screen that I can then use in screenshots or thumbnails or anything like that. So that is a cool option that I've used a couple times, but primarily I like to keep everything in game when I do my screenshots. And so the thing that I use more than anything, and I'm just gonna scroll through these so you guys can see real quick all the other options. But what I like to use is depth of field. And so this is where I spend the majority of my time when I'm making my screenshots and we'll just back up and we'll just select my very masculine looking dude here for a second. Um, and now you can adjust, oh, I do that sometimes. Sometimes when you try to grab the slider, you, you'll you grab the photo behind. But you can now adjust your focus depth. So I like to go right until my guy is in focus. Then you can even adjust how blurry you want your background to be. So obviously if you decrease that blur curve, you're gonna have to decrease your focus depth here but now we've got our dude here with a extremely bokeh background and uh yeah you can center him up and you can take your picture you just press insert to bring that panel back you click snap and boom there you go you have a full or a two times resolution uh screenshot that you can then take and impress your friends and so what i like to do is to make my screenshot so here's an alpha raptor actually get him moving pretty quick so we've got our alpha raptor we've got our depth of field going our depth of field is obviously pretty strong because his butt's out of focus <laughs> but i'll bring up my camera 
and then, oh, not the roll. I always do that on accident. We're just going to bring down that field of view. And there we go. We'll get it at an angle. And look at that. Just like that. You've got a nice little screenshot. Nothing too fancy, um, but something definitely passable. And it looks really nice. It would look great on YouTube. So anyways, I just wanted to make this short little video to explain exactly how I do my thumbnails to share my secrets with all of you guys. Um, and I guess I'll show you this real quick. If you do go into Alt F2, you can go through the, the world. And so it makes it really easy to traverse. Uh, and even if you're just playing single player and you're not looking to take screenshots, but you're just looking for a way to look through the world um, or to search around for something in particular, you can always just press Alt F2. So one more quick tip for you guys. If you wanted to get like a sweet sunset or a sunrise photo, um, but didn't want to sit here and wait for the sun to either set or rise, there's actually a console command that I use to get the exact time of day I want for my photos. So all you got to do is press the tilde or the tab key rather, and then you're going to type in set time of day. And then it is military time. So if you don't know military time, you're going to have to find a way to convert the time you want to military time. Um, but then we're going to go ahead and I don't want to do 10 o'clock. I'm going to do 6 o'clock. And boom, there you go. Now you've got a nice little sunrise. Or is the sun rising over there? I don't know where the sun rises. But you can change the time of day to whatever you want. If you're looking for a nighttime shot, you can always go to 2200 hours. And now here we are in the dark. I like to typically keep it at 10 a.m. Everything's nice and bright. The sun's up in the sky. And you can get everything lit pretty nicely this way. But as I was saying previously, some of your buttons stop working after you go into that Alt F2 mode a couple times. For example, my K button no longer works, so I can't do the orbit cam. Um, and then if I'm trying to pick things on my hot bar, they're working right now, but this is one of the things that glitches out for me pretty frequently. Uh, I'll stop being able to access things in my hotbar with the actual number, so I have to come in here and equip them manually. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I can't like zoom out. I can't use my mouse wheel to go in a third person. So you do lose a little bit of functionality because it is a little bit buggy, but it is worth it for being able to come in here and just take awesome screenshots of whatever whatever you really want. So I hope this was helpful to you guys or whoever was watching this video. And if you are using this uh, and you're part of the Flipsider community, be sure to share with me any photos that you take with this over on Discord so that I can post them in the art channel um, and get you a little bit of, a little bit of attention for, for the cool stuff that you're doing with the screenshots and arc. So anyway, that's where we're going to wrap the video for today. We're going to go ahead and drop that just keep it right there boom and that could be our screenshot <laughs> thanks for watching guys i hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and let me know what you would like to see in a tutorial in next or if you never want to see a tutorial again let me know so that i can make whatever it is that you guys are looking for so thanks for watching and i'll see all of you on the flip side